I'm Drew Scanlon. I'm exploring the world through the lens of games, and I'm doing it with the support of people like you on Patreon. Help us out at patreon.com slash clothmap. The first two days of Nadam, Mongolia's annual traditional games festival, are taken up by horse racing and the opening ceremony. On the third day, we headed back to the stadium in the middle of Ulaanbaatar to see the rest of what are known as the three games of men, namely wrestling and archery. Our cab driver was already listening to the wrestling broadcast on the radio. So I think the seventh round is finishing. That's why um, he's singing the Song of Praise. Does he have a favorite wrestler? He's from Zauhan province, so he is supporting wrestling from the area. The games of Nadam are a big deal. Competitions are held in each of Mongolia's 21 provinces, and the winners meet here to declare the ultimate victor. Once we arrived at the stadium, we waded into the excited crowd, past vendors selling food, homemade commemorative items, and Kodak moments. Many attendees were dressed in their finest traditional garb. Security was tight. Even with our press badges, we still had to show passports to the blue-suited parliamentary guard to get into the stadium through the media entrance. Inside, the wrestling competition was in full swing. untrained eye, the wrestling itself looked pretty straightforward. Except when it came to the elaborate actions that occur before and after each match. The movements are meant to evoke two animals. So it usually represents phoenix and a male camel. Camel actions involve the slapping of muscles, while the phoenix dance reminded me of a bird in low gravity. It's representing the strength and flexibility of those two animals. It also shows how your body is better than the other wrestlers. But for all the posturing, a strong sense of respect is also built into the sport. Tied West usually represents that wrestler is ready to fight and battle, and untied shows that the competition is finished, and I'm not holding any grudge, I'm respecting everything. The wrestler that's lost is bowing, and accepting that he's actually lost the competition, so uh, going under his arm. And the other one is also accepting that he won, and it shows that they're respecting each other. And yeah, when winning wrestler slaps, the bomb means just work hard if you don't want to get more slaps from me. <laughs> Wrestling is also the only event that women do not compete in. It, it's old saying, though. It's a myth that said that um, many, many years ago, women participated once. Uh, for the wrestling competition, and she actually won. And men didn't like it, so they've changed the West to Open West to prevent women participating. Wow. Yeah. Because they got beat. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> As with any popular sport, new wrestlers are training all the time. A few days later, in a park on the edge of the city, we got to meet the next generation of fearsome warriors. As you might expect, just as much attention is paid in training to the ceremonial format as the actual wrestling. The kids are taught how to do the camel and phoenix dances, as well as how to wrestle respectfully. As in horse racing, kids start wrestling young. He's probably three or four. Yeah. So cute. I chatted with the kid's coach about what training is like for a young wrestler. First, they learn to let the person fall without any injuries. Even though it is a fighting competition, it's not all about winning or not about letting the other person fall. It's all about respect, love, and respecting the audience, getting very nice energy, and showing the body and the, all the muscles that they've got. It's just, um, it's very different sport. 
good, good. Mongolian boys usually, their very first teachers are usually their fathers. His father taught him, and now he taught his son, which is sitting next to him. Mongolian men need to be strong and capable in this very extreme weather. So sports represent that character of Mongolian men as well. Nadam makes Mongolians very special. Once a year, everyone gets to feel uh, Mongolian history and everyone gets to feel that they're Mongol. That's why I guess Mongolians love sports. Of course, when I think of Mongolian warriors, I can't help but think of archery. In a separate venue next to the stadium, men and women archers compete for supremacy. Each archer fires four arrows, tipped with bone or wood, in ten rounds. Knocking over any block counts as a hit. The archer with the most hits wins. To get a better sense of the sport, we spoke with an archer named Oran Ga, who's competing in her second Nadam. That stretchy part is made out of stretchy threads. Depending on the weather, when the weather is hot, the archery becomes more stretchier, and the weather is cold, it's very tight. But then she needs to fill, and she needs to decide how much strength she needs to use to actually pull the arrow. She really likes archery. It, it makes people very patient. Then she's the first archer in her family. She is very happy that she is leaving this unique culture to her next generation, and she is happy that she's becoming an example of women and participating in the three games of men. It's a unique culture. No one else has this kind of Nadam festival. Perhaps because Nadam is such a Mongolian event, a national TV station got curious about why this blonde guy was poking around. Being able to see these games that are really historical artifacts um, is, is really amazing to see. When the segment aired on TV, I got to hear what I sound like dubbed in Mongolian. A documentary filmmaker. I include this part not only for my own vanity, but because of what the segment was about. They're saying that Mongolia, Mongolia is receiving about half a million tourists at the moment, and if we want two million tourists by 2020, we need to make more videos about Mongolia, and they're basically saying that you're doing free advertisement for Mongolia without the support of Mongolian government. And they're implying that we should be supporting people like you a lot in the future. Again, these traditional games are alive and well only because new generations of competitors keep coming in. This man runs an archery team in Ulaanbaatar for kids of all ages. Why archery? Why has he chosen to devote 20 years to archery? In old times, uh, Mongolian men used to hunt with arch archers. They used to uh, find their food. And it's because it's part of Mongolian culture, he's very happy to represent this, this sport. He even makes his own equipment. So this is made of three things. Mainly it's a horn, there is a tree in there as well, a wood, and as well as a muscle. This is one of the biggest bows that you could see. And when in order to make bow, you need to look at the person's height, weight, and strength. What's the weight difference in pole between men and women? The, the weight feels usually less for women, however, it depends on, again, what kind of bow they're using. There are women who are using bigger bows and requiring more strength, and there are ladies using smaller bows and requiring less strength. So it really depends on the preference of the lady. And the men usually shoot from 75 and ladies 65 meters away. And he needs to cover his uh, hands now. It's to protect the hand from getting hit by the string. But however, if you hold it properly, you wouldn't hit your hand. However, it's just still for protection. As for the young archers on his team, 
The sport clearly means a lot to them, too. How old are you? Four. Six. Why do you like archery? They think it's not a sport of strength. They think it's a sport of brain and intellect. That's why you can be better than a man. Uh, this, this sport changed his life. He used to get angry very easily before. He used to be a little bit aggressive before. And now he's very patient and he respects people now. So his character is starting to change in a nice way. Is archery fun? He likes it. <laughs> Not wanting to be outdone by a four and six year old, I decided to try for myself. Andrew, you're a man, so you gotta try 75. Oh man! <laughs> so think that this is your root and this is your stand. So okay. flex this and pull strong. When I fired, the woman's face on the right said it all. <laughs> The trickiest part is you're pulling back with your thumb, not your fingers. It's with the thumb. Okay, it needs to be tight, yeah, and okay. strong. <laughs> to the right. That almost got there. <laughs> the third shot was the worst of the three. Up, up. Up, pull and up. That's it. Go. Oh boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Try to keep it in the field next yeah, time, Drew. Yeah, be careful if you hit someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. In my defense, I didn't grow up in Mongolia. I don't know what it's like to be steeped in a culture that celebrates its warrior history through traditional games. But celebrate it, they do. Back at the stadium, winners from each event are honored in front of the crowd with trophies, songs of praise, and the occasional swig of arag, or fermented horse milk. Try serving that at the Indy 500. I may not be very good at Mongolia's historical games, but I do know that such a history deserves to be kept alive. And that's exactly what the people of Mongolia are doing. Cloth Map is possible only because of our supporters on Patreon. If you liked this video and want to keep seeing more like it, we'd love to have you with us.